Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I have a review for you of this very interesting little knife here. This is the P801 by the, this company here. They, they they say it's pronounced Rake. I'm probably not going to pronounce that properly just because this does not spell Rake. Um, but anyways, that's that's who's making this guy. And um, first off, uh, I want to thank my buddy Eric for sending this guy along. He donated this channel. It's very kind of him. So thanks, Eric. Next thing, size comparison. Um, right here we have the uh, the Spydeco Delica, which is pretty excellent. Um, right here we have the uh, steel wheel cut jack in three inch size and the Ontario rat number one. This is a full size knife, three and a half inch blade and whatnot. And um, it's actually relatively thin, which is another comparison to make a thinness comparison. But uh, that's kind of nice. Um, next thing, this brand. Uh, you probably never heard of them. Well, maybe you have. Um, and it is the knife-making arm of Phoenix Flashlights. Saying people who make Phoenix Lights are, uh, are making, well, I'm sorry, are uh, owning this company here. Um, and so uh, Rake is the, the, the company name here. They're, they're swearing. Their slogan is ready to make it, uh, which <laughs> I'm 12, so amuses me greatly. Um, but anyways, um, that's an entertaining slogan. One thing to highlight, though, this is not the same thing as Reich knives. Even though I will probably mispronounce this as Reich during the course of this review, because this does not spell Rake, um, they are completely different. Uh, Reich knife is a high-end maker. This is a budget sort of thing. Um... So there you go. And then uh, in terms of who's actually making these, the consensus on the internet is that these are made by San Ren Mu, which is the same OEM factory who makes Real Steel Land and other brands. Honestly, this makes a lot of sense. I mean, if we look at a San Ren Mu right next to this guy, uh, there were a lot of similarities there. Uh, but I haven't been able to confirm this officially with any kind of official documentation. So do take that with a grain of salt, and we will consider this guy independently of other San Ren Mu produced knives, because every OEM is going to have different specs and whatnot. So anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the good the great, the bad, and the ugly of this little guy here. First off, I gotta say, I am liking several aspects of the uh, Rake company uh, relative to other emerging Chinese brands. Um, they are a division of Phoenix Lights, whose work I, always, uh, I already kind of appreciate. They, they do good work, and Phoenix's existing distribution chain will make this guy a little easier to get than some of the uh, the other, you know, your, your ch and other, other brands like that. So you don't have to rely on sketchy sites that are promoting counterfeit goods in order to buy one of these guys. Um, I haven't looked, at, oh, I'm sorry, when I looked at Rake's site here, I haven't seen any clone or homage pieces, which is something that I appreciate very much. So many of these companies, like Ch, are also making, you know, uh, homage pieces to other companies. This seems to be all unique designs, which is great. They appear to actually have a warranty, although I haven't tested it. And so already, right there, uh, Rake, Rake is ahead of the game here. I appreciate that very much. Um, and so th th that's good. Next thing, the blade on this guy is actually pretty good. Um, it's got a nice shape. You get some flat, you get some belly up at the front, you get a nice pokey tip here. Um, it is actually pretty thin behind the edge. This is a nice grind on this knife. Um, and it goes well with this steel, which is 14C28N, which is a very, very nice little budget steel. Um, it does absolutely take a great edge, and in fact, it came with a pretty damn nice edge. Um, but it doesn't hold that edge forever because it's 14C28N. But look, for the price, um, this steel and this blade are absolutely very, very nice. Uh, another little detail that I like very much is the thumb stud here. The thumb stud is absolutely out of the slicing path, and you can use it as a thumb stud, although the tent on this one, at least, is a little hard for thumb studding. But look, I don't really care that they included it, given that it's out of the way, so no complaints there. Um, the design on the whole of this guy, actually, I, I like. It's it's pretty unique. I mean, certainly it looks like a folding knife, um, but it's got some nice elements to it. For instance, the, the, the decorations here, the blue, then the pivot collar on both sides here, here is nice. The fact that the blue is matching on all fronts. This is a, a, an attractive knife. I find this, you know, absolutely A-OK -okay in that way. Um, nice sharpening choil, which I didn't mention earlier, but I do appreciate, and they did well on and I mean, just on the whole, it's nice to see something that's unique and actually pretty cool looking. So no arguments there. I mean, it's also very thin in the pocket. Uh, like I said, I mean, you can see here, if we compare this to the Delica, that um, it's pretty thin and it's pretty space efficient altogether as well. I mean, if we compare this to the Delica for a bunch more blade, you're around the same size here in the pocket. So this is a very easy to carry sort of knife uh, with everything concealed. There are no close cutting edges to the edges. It's closed. Absolutely nice in that way. The flipper tab on this guy is not all that crazy. It's up there, but 
It's not all that up there. It's got some rounding on the front of it there. The fit and finish on this guy is actually pretty remarkably good. It's slightly off-center at this point after having, uh, you know, used it a little bit more. Oh, the pivot's come a little loose. That's probably why. Um, whoops. But anyways, I'll uh, keep that one in mind for later. But um, that, that's something I'm not necessarily... <laughs> in general, though, the fit and finish on this guy is, uh, is pretty good. I can't really argue with it too much there. And the action on it is also pretty good. You can see here that this is firing pretty reliably 100% of the time as I'm using it. It's got a nice strong detent on there. And although it's not exactly false shutty, uh, it, that, absolutely, it's not an action I'm going to complain too much about. And so, um, at least to me, that's that's what's good here, is that uh, it has a very nice unassisted action, uh, which is great. Um, it has very good fit and finish, particularly when the pivot is tight so that the blade is nicely centered. Um, although the fact that it came loose is a little weird. Uh, anyways, moving along, the uh, flipper tab is small, it's thin in the pocket, and carries very, very nicely. It's got a unique design, rather than an homage, like a lot of your smaller Chinese micro brands do. The thumb studs out of the slicing path, it's got a good blade with nice steel, thin behind the edge, good sharpening choil, and uh, the, the company has a lot to offer relative to a lot of the other, you know, Chinese brand of the last 10 minutes sorts of brands that are popping up these days. On the great side for me is the value. Um, this is a 30 dollar knife, uh, which is an unassisted flipper, which is great, with a great detent, which is great, with very, very good fit and finish, which is great. Um, and although the materials are about what you'd expect for a $30 knife, they don't need to be. And so compared to a lot of the Chinese-made knives from American brands at 30 bucks, this is really doing a great job. I mean, comparing this to a, a Chinese-made Kershaw at this price, oh man, this is, this is a way above. So I feel like this actually represents a very nice value in the knife-buying world and competes very, very nicely nicely with Chinese-made things from other American OEMs. So, um, to me, at least, that's what's great, is that value. Um, on the bad side, look, this is not pronounced rake. I'm sorry, there is no way that you can torture the English writing system into pronouncing this rake. Um, uh, given, certainly, the people who named this do not speak English, that's that's fine. But no, um, uh, people will be calling this Ruike or Rike or something like that. If you wanted to call it rake, just write R-A-K-E. Maybe I'm being entirely unreasonable and expecting Chinese speakers to have a better grasp of the English writing system, but that really kind of does bug me. Because if I say rake, nobody understands this. They're searching for R-A-K-E. If I say ruaiki, people would get it, but that's apparently not how it's pronounced. Uh, okay, I, I digress. Um, next thing, guys, do you want to add a couple of more numbers here? I, I, this is a little ridiculous. Um, they've put an entire long serial number on the front of this knife for some freaking reason. Um, and then the, 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 the model number is P801-SF, which is kind of hard to keep track of, particularly when there's a P801 and a P108. Uh, you're not helping anybody here, guys, so come on. Next thing. Um, the clip here, as you can see here, it's a, it's a nice clip, but unfortunately uh, it has a uh, set of screws that are kind of right in the way of this deep carry clip. So, although there's probably enough clearance so that thinner pants will be able to slide up all the way to the top, um, these should be flush fit screws. Anytime you do a deep carry clip, the screws inside need to sit down beneath the clip level, or at least to sit flush with it. Um, and so that's a little bit frustrating. Next thing, I mentioned that they have a warranty, uh, which is something I appreciate, but the thing is, on the website they have language like, keep the warranty card or original purchase receipt. And this is always a little scary to me. If this is a genuine rake, 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 rake knife, um, then damn it, you should just service it. And, and wanting me to have the warranty card or the receipt just is weaselly. It's like, this is how you get out of paying warranty claims. I don't like seeing that kind of thing. If it's your knife, you service it. Or you just don't offer a warranty and you drop the price a little more. Whatever, but that, that, that was scary to me. Um, the knife is also a little bit on the heavier side because this is all steel. So uh, you're looking at three and a half inches and you're coming in at 4.2 ounces. Look, that's not actually heavy in the grand scheme of things, but for a knife that is as compact as this guy is, like in titanium, this would be ultra freaking light, but this is steel, so you're gonna have to keep that in mind. But 30 bucks, it's steel. I get that, no problem. Then finally on the bad side, something I always struggle a little bit to deal with, but um, I have been hearing horror stories about this guy. I posted a picture of this one on Instagram uh, saying, you know, I got this for review. And most of the time when I post something, you know, a bunch of people comment, oh, nice, Knife. Oh, yeah, I want one of those. Oh, I've got one of those. I love it. Once in a while, you'll get one person or another, like, grumping about it. You know, like, oh, I had one of those, but it was sharp and, like, terrible. But with this guy, a bunch of people started sharing horror stories. Um, A really common one was that the tent was super weak on theirs. Although, in this case, 
Absolutely not. This is a great detent. Um, one actually, no, two people talked about the stop pin falling out. Uh, one guy mentioned a lock bar failure, which I'm not sure what that would even mean. Maybe it broke off or something. Um, another person mentioned that the screws were on too tight with thread locker. I mean, look, the amount of pain that people were expressing in dealing with this knife seemed to be way above the norm. And what this probably means, and this is all from actual humans, by the way. These are people who comment on a regular basis. So this isn't just like advertising bots trying to slander this for the competition. Um, these are people I would generally believe. And so what this means is that this knife is probably pretty inconsistent. This one is absolutely great but it means that Rake is probably dropping ones that aren't. So you just gonna wanna make sure that if you uh, buy this online, for instance, you buy it from a retailer where you can make a return if there turns out to be a problem. Uh, and so to me, at least that's what's bad, is that I'm hearing a lot of horror stories, which suggest to me that they've got some inconsistency issues. Um, I, it is a little bit heavy because it is all steel, but it's 30 bucks. I can't get too bad out of shape about that. Um, the, the warranty has some Weasley language in there, which I'm not a big fan of. Uh, the screws are, in fact, blocking the clips here. These uh, names, the PE8018675309, num they're hard to keep track of. You don't need all these freaking numbers on your blade here. And I'm sorry, this is not pronounced rake, no matter how often and you reproduce it. No, 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 I'm sorry, that's not gonna fly. To me, there is only one really ugly thing here in this particular knife, and that is the slipperiness of it. Um, the handle on this guy is slick, 100%, and in a Vaseline factory sort of situation, you may struggle a little bit, particularly when manipulating this guy. They have provided a little bit of jimping right up here and a little bit of jimping up here, but this is a knife that is slippery, um, 100 freaking percent. And so if you are in moist situations or lubricated situations regularly, this is is not the choice you're going to want. You're going to want something with a little bit more inherent grip to do it. So um, to me, at least, that's that's a little bit ugly. I'd like to see even the finish done a little bit differently so that there's a little bit more to grab onto here. You'll be okay with the finger group. Either way, not a big fan of the slipper th uh, slipper dude. Eh, sure, whatever. Slipper dude of it. So that's ugly. Um, let's go to the final conclusion. And the conclusion here is that this particular unit is honestly pretty compelling. It's got a nice action to it, 100%. It's got very nice materials for the price. I mean, uh, for 30 bucks, okay. Uh, you know, the, the steel here, the four, uh, 14C28N, it's fine. I, I got no real complaints with it there. It's steel. It's it, it's on real bearings. I mean, I, I'm okay with that. The build quality on this particular unit is very, very solid. I really can't complain with it. This is nicely made. And it's a brand that has a warranty, a distribution network, unique designs, no homage or clone pieces. That itself is a beautiful thing, and you can buy it from retailers that you already support and know, which, again, I appreciate very much. And like I said, comparing this guy to a $30 Chinese-made knife from CRKT a Kershaw bird is not a flattering comparison for the American companies. Uh, Rake is doing way better in terms of build and finishing for the dollar than Chinese-made knives from these American brands. Um, I, and I kind of wonder if we're heading towards a world in which Chinese brands are making, well, cheap Chinese knives, uh, and the American brands end up having to focus their efforts elsewhere, because once knives like this get into, like, your Walmart, your sporting goods stores, I think it's going to be a big struggle for the American companies. They'll have to refocus, doing things like these guys, the Kershaw Dividend, which is made in the USA, uh, and... You know, it aims slightly higher in the price point, but look, this is a really nice budget choice, and I think it's going to put these kinds of things that are probably going to change the calculus a little bit for American companies on that very, very lower end. But that said, at the same time, I am a little bit worried because, like I said, when you post these things, or when I post these things, usually I get much more uniformity. People are saying, oh, yeah, it's really good. Oh, yeah, it's really awful. But this one was right spread in the middle. So, um, like I said, you're going to want to buy from a retailer that you trust because it'll make it easier if you sold a lemon. If you get yours out of the pocket, it has no detent, you want to be able to send that little guy back um, because that is a problem and it may be a problem here. I said this one's great, but uh, look, if we, we're talking about this particular unit, um, given this price point, if you get one that's like mine, this is a super compelling option. Um, and this particular knife has left me pretty damned impressed. And if they are able to get to a point where they can make these consistently and get them widely distributed with this kind of fit, finish, features, detent, all of that, they will absolutely be raking in the cash. Huh? Huh? Okay, um, so there you go. I hope that this was interesting to you and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.